Good afternoon. We're here at Parkside Elementary School with a special guest. Um, our fourth grade students are going to learn a little bit about the life and times of a World War II veteran, Mr. William Crithers. Um, this um, group of, of children, after the storytelling is over today, is, are going to do some writing of some essays and some thoughts about visiting with Mr. Crithers. And this project is made possible in part by the academic. 20 Academic Foundation, as well as our students in the back, we're going to give them a shout out, Kendra Shepard and Dakota Deaton. So Mr. Crithers, welcome to Parkside. Thank so you. I'm glad you're here. And, uh, it's up to me now. It's up to you. Well, their first question was, the children, these guys made up some of these questions, can you tell us about your enlistment after the bombs hit Pearl Harbor? Can you tell us a little bit about what that process was when you were enlisted? Because they don't know what it's like to sign up to go to war. Oh, well, you don't want to go. We don't want another one. But, uh, yeah, I uh, enlisted in uh, 19, I stop think, 43. Your folks weren't even alive. Man. I know, your grandparents might have been, some of them. But, uh, and I was just 16, so don't get in a hurry, but there was a war on. And all the fellows I ran around with were 17, 18, and I got my mother to sign the papers and I took off, okay? Because there was a war on. And it was my responsibility, as much as yours will be someday, I hope never another war, but to do things like that. I had a good life. I've had an excellent life. I swam all over the world. I, I've got pictures here that you probably won't. That was me back then. Wasn't I good looking? <laughs> <laughs> That's when I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was probably 20 then. I don't know when that was taken. But uh, I'd done demolition. I was attached. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. When I went in the service, they had uh, first, second, third phase training, which don't mean anything, but you, some of you are quite certain with it. And uh, first phase training was at what you call boot camp, I guess, 13 weeks of that. And then I went to North Carolina for another 11 weeks of second phase training. And then I went to the West Coast, and everything happened perfectly. They had, uh, I was a pretty good swimmer, uh, and they had a swimming meet out there, and I won it, amazing as it may seem, back then. And the colonel said, you're going to go in the Navy. I was in the Marine Corps then already, you see. Well, see, that was one of their questions. They wanted to know what branch of the service that you oh, were Oh, I, I enlisted in the Marine Corps, and after, oh, 13, 26 weeks, I was attached to the Navy. I just met a Marine not too long ago. You what now? I met a Marine not too long ago at his house. A, a retired Marine. I'm a retired Marine. But, uh, my life changed completely then. I was immediately after this happened, I went to Pearl Harbor. Of course, I wasn't there when it was bombed. Now, get that straight. I'm not that old, but it could have been. Uh, I'll tell you a little about Pearl Harbor, or Pearl, we call it. It was on a Sunday afternoon in Vincennes, and we were all, we all went to a drugstore. Duesterberg's Drugstore, it's not there anymore. And you go down there and the girls would be there and the guys would be there like you're going to do it when you get to senior high school and that. We was all sitting in there having a milkshake or something, I don't know. And just, somebody come through the front door and said, Hey, they just, the Japanese just bombed Pearl Harbor. And I'll tell you what we all felt. Where's Pearl Harbor? Nobody knew anything about Pearl Harbor. Okay? You, you understand that? Nobody. Because Indiana is pretty far away from Hawaii. So you weren't <laughs> yeah. aware. Well, they weren't aware. Nobody was aware. 
And when you're in high school, you wasn't thinking about going over there anyway. But so anyway, that brings me up to date. I ended up on Guam. That was my first duty station. And uh, I was there. I was stationed there until the end of the war. We went out of there. You know where Guam is? Well, that'd be a good test for you. Next time you, 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 you do history, don't you? Look up Guam. Uh, this picture you might be interested in. It's the only one I brought because I don't like to bug people. This is the uh, USS Independence. The top picture is what it looked like during World War II. Then after the war, they they blew it up. Uh, we didn't do it. They sunk it with a nuclear, nuclear bomb. Not an atomic bomb, but the nuclear bomb, the biggie, the one we have now, uh, with many ships. And that's what it looks like now. It's in the Pacific, and it'll be there forever. I dove on it. A lot of people dove on it. It's still, you know, there. I'll let you look at that, and then I'll... This is a picture of Pearl when the Japanese attacked. That's just a brochure that they give you. I've been invited there five times. I went three for the commemoration of Pearl Harbor. And I'll say this to you, and I'll say, and you can tell your parents. This is what Pearl looked like before the Japanese bombed. What? What was my favorite part about Guam? I don't know, I just swam all my life. I still swim today. Yeah. Miss West can tell you, I see her every once in a while over at the Y. I still swim a half a mile three times a week. Do you walk, do you walk a half a mile three times a week or anything like that? So I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. What? Have you ever shot a JK-15? Have I ever what? I shot a JK-15. Uh, they didn't have anything like that. I'll tell you what we carry. I, I, I want you to talk about weapons. That would be great because one weapons. of the questions was we, they wanted to know if they gave you permission to use any kind of weapons. So please go ahead. They were wondering. They had a lot of good, good questions. What kind of weapons? Well, the weapons... You mean when I was in the Navy underwater? Yes. We just had knives and a, and a 45. We we didn't even wear a uniform. We were bathing suits all the time. I wonder. <laughs> yeah. We never, we didn't have to wear military attire, and we weren't assigned to any. Sh I guess uh, I'm trying to make this so you don't have to think about it. Being in the underwater demolition units that I was in, we were a separate outfit. Okay? We didn't go to. How am I going to We lived in a village on Guam in the mountains. You can look this up, it's still there. If you want to look at Guam. And the name of the village was Telefufu. That's the. That's the that's a pretty place. It's a tropical place. But that's where we were billeted. We weren't billeted with uh, any ship or anything like that. The only time we were on a ship is when they was taken somewhere to do something. Okay? That's what Pearl looked like in 1941. Uh, it's all changed. If you go to... If you... Do get the occasion, and I hope you do in your lifetime, because it's about over. They're not having any ceremonies anymore. They'll have them every December the 7th. But there's hardly anybody left from World War II that can go to it. The last time I went was in, uh, I think, 75. No, what year are we in now? We're in 2018. So were you there a couple of years ago or several years ago to visit? Last time I just survivors. 2013. Okay. I would have went to. Uh, anyway, yeah. 
There was five of us there. Five from the Arizona. There's a picture of the one there. I think you got it right there. It shows him. He's gone. They're all gone. Well, they were sound like they were older than you since you entered. Well, yeah, I was 16. 16. Those guys were some of them 25, 26. Yeah, I was a puff. I'm like you guys are. <laughs> but uh, well, they wanted to know about what kind of training you had to do for being a demolition expert, and they were very interested, weren't you? In what they we wondered if you wore wetsuits and if it was camouflaged and what nope. exactly your job was. Nope. We wore a military bathing suit, which I wouldn't suggest. I don't think they have anything like that anymore. Uh, I'll make it simple for you. UDT units, underwater demolition, was the first thing that was in uh, World War II, 43 to 45, and then it was done because the war was going by 46. And then I was transferred out there and I went to China for 21 months. But anyway, then in 1964, that's when they made the Navy SEALs, which came from us. We were the first units, the underwater demolition, and then the SEALs. And I'd love to be able to do some of the things they do, but that'll never happen. I'm too old. But uh, I can still do most of them in the water, I think. I think so. But, uh, yes. My cousin is a, um, a retired a person from the Marine Corps. Yeah, he's an old jarhead? No, he, well, he... Well, that's what I call him. Yeah. Yeah. But he came home and he's home now. Oh, he's retired? Yeah. Oh, good. Most of the people that I served with are no longer with us. I'm one of the fortunate. I'm in good health, I think, but who knows? Okay, now I've got you up to through Pearl, part yes. of it. Uh, it's a beautiful place. You can't realize how beautiful Pearl is, but there's no there's no ships in Pearl Harbor anymore. They come in there and get. Let's see, I'll find one here. <laughs> well, this is the best thing. This you can all look at this. This is just a Pearl Harbor, Hawaii thing. Now that's the memorial, that white thing. If you ever go there, when you get money and go, or your folks take you, uh, that's the. Th You'll go at Pearl Harbor, and you'll go out on a ship, a dinghy we call them, and that's just that's a memorial for uh, the Arizona, that white thing. And we go on that. We we did some of our training on that because it's in 40 feet of water, you know, this big battleship. Now the only thing that's at Pearl Harbor permanently is the Missouri. You know about any of the ships that. You probably did. Well, this is just a, this is just thing you get. Now, there's a perfect picture of the memorial for the Arizona, which is the only thing they have commemorating the beginning of World War II at Arizona. And at all the guys that served on it, it, it tells you a little. I think you'll get a kick if you look at the. You saw a picture of the ship, am I correct? You know what it looks like? It's a big battleship. Wait, let's see. I guess I don't know how much it weighed, but probably uh, 42, 43,000 tons. That's bigger than anything in Lawrenceville. But this is a picture of the memorial that you go out to. And if you, I'm going to pass this around. You can look at anything you want in here. This is, shows you a picture of the ship underneath it. The Arizona. Okay? Well. Okay. You got a question? Lay them on me. 
Well, I, I do have a couple more, and then I'll let the kids go. Okay. I wanted to know exactly what it was that you did when you put explosives underneath bridges. When you did one of, one of your demolition assignments was to put explosives underneath bridges. Well, it's yeah. It's kind of hard to wrap our minds around that because we don't really know what that would would involve. And they were very interested in learning how you got your assignment and what exactly did you do that night? Did you do it during the day? Well, we did. We did most of our work at night. Well, that's what we wanted to find out. We went out at night. We were dropped off at, at whatever we were going to blow. Mainly we were blowing up things that the Japanese, the Japanese were, I don't know how we ever put them. Now that's the truth. I'm telling you the truth. They're smart people. They take railroad ties and they put them in the water and weld them. So when a ship come in to like a landing craft with a bunch of guys going to land on that, just cut the bottom out of it, and most of them drown. So in other words, the ties were underneath water, they didn't right. see them, and it right. split the ship. That was our job, to go in at night, from here, you know, a mile, dive down and put our packs on. We had C2 packs. You know what C2s are? He does. He does. Uh, that's the explosives. Oh. <laughs> yeah, explosives. and they're not very big, and you can mix them in your hand like that. You stick a detonator in them oh, yeah. with the electric wire, the wire we had, and mm -hmm. we had a bunch of that. We just had bathing suits and a knife. We didn't have a gun with these. The episode of Mythbusters that they were experimenting with that explosive, um, Mythbusters on. They were experimenting with that. Yeah. Now it's really something. You can blow up anything. Did you ever make any mistakes? Because that was one of our thought processes. You make causes. mistakes, you're dead. So you didn't ever make any mistakes? No. Okay. No. Well, well, they had some good questions. Only seven of us in a unit. And uh, I have a friend here. Well, he's no longer with us. It was one of the officers in the outfit I was in, and that's... You guy, you wouldn't know him, but your folks would know him. Guy McGahee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's buried out here. Mm -hmm. He's one of uh, the lieutenants that I served with. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions was to ask you what rank you were. Yeah, good thinking. What, what did you say? What, okay. rank, what rank what did you achieve while you were in the service? What oh, well, I came out. You don't make much rank in World War II. I was a PSC until 1944. Private first class? Yeah, that's it. There wasn't, there wasn't, many, wasn't many people making rank. They already were there. I was just a, just a guy that was fortunate to end up in a unit. But they didn't worry about rank. So I come out of just a corporal. But I done a lot of things while I was in there where I was an acting officer and stuff like that. You know, when people got killed, we had to move like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I met you. That's that was our that was our team. Now if somebody got blowed up or something, then you had to replace them. And we didn't have many people to replace. It wasn't like the Marine Corps or the Navy and uh, well, anyway, that's okay. Does that answer your question? There's a lot of rank in the military. Uh, I've known a lot of people. I've got a friend now that just retired last year out of the Navy that was Joanne's nephew. Mm -hmm. He retired as a Navy Admiral. He's from Lawrenceville. He was in charge of a nuclear pack of submarines. He retired here about four years ago, and he just gave up his commission last year because. And his uh, name is uh, Mike Gray. That's a normal name on where I live on 16th. That's where he grew up. But he's retired. He retired as a as a, an admiral, mm -hmm. and he the only thing he said, uh, and I'm quoting him now because I can understand. It, he said. We went aboard his ship, the first one in. 
personally had, which was the uh, Georgia. Joanne and I did. We didn't get to go down out to sea in it. We just got to go on his ship and it was commissioned up in Connecticut. And he said, you see that button there? I hope I never have to push it. Because he had nuclear bombs on his submarine. And if he'd have pushed them, we, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be talking, you wouldn't be talking, we wouldn't be here anymore. Don't ever, I hope that never happened. What do you want, hon? Um, did you ever get hurt? Hurt? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you call hurt? Like the Any injuries? Yeah. I've had a couple of injuries where we had an explosion where it knocked me out. But as far as, and I got knife once. That was an accidental thing. But you carry a big knife and you have to cut things. So, no. No, I was, uh, I've been very fortunate just going to water for the last, what would you say, Rosemary? <laughs> I started swimming at the Y in Vincennes when I was eight years old. I, I'm glad you're going to tell them about that because I told them that you joined the Y after uh, your mom signed you up. Yep. And I've been going there. I, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm almost 90, so I love it. That's great. What? Where was your first battle? Where was my what? first battle if you, what, that you were involved in? Yeah. I was in battles, like, like you think when you watch TV and they're shooting guns and, that, and they're taking an island or something. You watch that stuff? Oh, I want to bring up something that you might want to watch tonight. I don't know what channel it's on. I didn't get a chance to write it down. I just saw it in the paper. They are starting a series this week, I guess for all week, and this is something you know nothing about. Very few people know about it. During World War II, when it started, the United States government was scared to death of the Japanese out on the West Coast. I had a personal friend out there. My my brother-in-law had grew up on the West Coast. They had orange groves. And they and I met I met these people after they got out in the in the sixties. The United States government took all of them if you were Japanese and you had a farm or ranch or whatever you had and they confined you in a concentration camp during the whole war. You didn't know that, did you? No, not if you did. Not even the teachers even know it. Well, it's because they thought that they were enemies. Well, they were Japanese. Yeah, they were Japanese. Even though some of them were Japanese Americans. They all were. Yes. But they, they locked them up. But that's going to be on tonight at 8 o'clock, the first series of it. Not, I intend to watch it because it's interesting. That's part of our American history that you don't hear anything about. Sometimes I watch the show when it was bad. Like, they're, they're looking for evidence that you might have survived after World War II. That might have what? Survived? Well, Hitler might have survived. There's been people that have kind of thrown that out that he survived, maybe. He wouldn't be alive today. Yeah, but he survived a little, maybe a little bit longer. Who knows? If he did, he had to go to South America. I don't think he did. That's just like people talking, and, I'm, and we're just talking now because I don't know any more than you about that. That's like people saying they never had the, the Holocaust, where the, the Germans killed all the Jews. They're saying that never happened. You hear that, don't you? There are some doubters, yes. Oh, it happened. But Did anyway. you, had, you had some questions in your notebook, and so does Miss Thatcher. So I, I want them to give a chance to ask What them was your scariest moment? What was my scariest moment? Well, That's a good question. I don't know which one it would be, but it was underwater. And, and well, it would have been when I got knocked out in concussion, and I was out for three days. I'm lucky to be here anyway. We had an explosion, what was supposed to happen, and they got me out of the water with the other guys. Three of them were killed out of our seven, and the four of us lived. That's it. I wasn't scared. I didn't know anything about it until I woke up in the hospital. But yeah, that would be scary. And then the part that would be scary is having to go back and do the same thing again. Go back out in the water, do things, and use those 
explosive packs and make them up. You made them up yourself. It's kind of like during the war, the uh, guys that were in the parachutes, they had to fold their own parachute. Nobody had done it for them, so if it didn't open, it was their it was their problem. So I would be the same way with us. But you know that? Well, you can ask anything you want to put us to death. She's got a question. Yeah, don't be shy because this will be what? a chance to. Yeah, I'm, I'm just simple. Uh, have you ever been to the YMCA? Have I ever been what? Have you ever been to the YMCA? I go there all the time. Yeah, that's where he's went. I was the director of the Vincent's Walk. And uh, after, I, after I got out of the service, I went to the YMCA College in Chicago. It's no longer in existence. George Williams, I graduated from there in 1951. And I came back to Vincent. Well, I started out to come back to Terre Haute as uh, assistant director of the Y in Terre Haute. Now they got a new Y. I don't even know where it's at. Then, my old friend that ran the Y in Vincennes called me and said, I want you to come help me. So I went back to Vincennes. That's where I grew up. Yeah. Is there anybody else in the water with you? Yeah. There's a team of seven. We were going to one phase of what we were going to do. Like that ship you saw a picture of? Well, we never then blew up anything that big. But if we had to, there would be probably four teams. That would be 28 people. Yeah. And different parts of that ship doing our thing. So when you set those charges and you got back and you got out of the way and it went and blew, it's, it's going to be bang real big. It didn't sink that battleship. What? I have two questions, but when you were in the water, did you ever get hurt like by an animal or anything? No. Oh, you want to get into that? <laughs> okay. I'll go sit down. I don't have very good legs anymore. Uh, I swam all over the Pacific, all over the Atlantic. Just about anywhere you find water with sharks. They don't bother you. That's a that's a misconception. Yeah, if you cut your arm and you're bleeding, yeah, they'll bother you. But uh, we we done a lot of things underwater where sharks would come right up to you. We could like that hit them in the nose and they go off. Here we go. Shark Defender. <laughs> get out of here. No, we weren't defenders. <laughs> we we just know yourself. how to get rid of. Them. Oh, we man. never killed anything. Yeah. No. My other question was: Did you ever have like a secret mission that nobody knew about? Every one of them was secret. You know what? It's we didn't know where we was going or what we was doing until it was there. And then when we got back, they said, "Where were we? <laughs> what was we doing? Where were we in the food? You realize we're talking about the Pacific." That's bigger than, well, it's just big. What? Uh, did you ever have like a canine? A what? A canine. They wondered about dogs in the military during your, your service years. Did you ever have canines that were like service dogs? No. They couldn't swim. <laughs> no, we didn't have things like that. They got them everywhere now. Mm -hmm. On the island of Guam, they had many, many uh, canine dogs that the Marine Corps had, the Army had, and all that. Tell them about trying out for the Olympics. Did you? I told them a little bit about that. I was thinking you said that you tried out for the 1948 Olympics, yes? Yes, I was an alternate member of the U.S. Olympic team in 1948. I don't know if I brought any of that stuff. I didn't think you'd be asked. Well, that's me when I was swimming. That was in uh, that was in the military, in college, and the Olympic Games. Yeah. What was your stroke that you tried out? In? Was it breaststroke? Oh no. Freestyle. Freestyle. 100, 200 meters. Okay. 
this, I'm going to show you these things, then you can look at them all you want to. This is a, the flight deck of an aircraft carrier. Okay? That's a U.S. Hornet. I was on that a lot of times in the Pacific. And this is the anchor, one of the anchors off the Arizona. And that weighs, well, I don't have the picture there. You can't see it here. I think it weighs 13,000 pounds or something. It's big. It, anyway, what? Let's just go around the ring. Let's get you. How scary was it in boot camp? How scary? Yeah, since you're only 16. Good question. I was in good shape. I went in, when I went in in 1943, now that's the truth, if I ever told it, there was guys that were being drafted that were 44, 45 years of age. That was the highest they ever drafted anybody, age 45. We had a couple guys in our outfit from Tennessee that they don't. They didn't know how to do anything. They could. We had to help them. Now I, you got to remember, I was 16, 17 right there, and I was in good shape. We had a we had a physical outfit over at Vincennes at Lincoln High School, where the where the uh, people from George Field, the Air Force, they brought those guys over to run our uh, what do you call those things? It's been so long ago, I can't even think what they call it. Forgot. No, where you we go down the swing ropes and oh, like a um, yeah. triathlon or a swimming meet of some sort. Well, it's used in a gym, what they call it, and we were good at it. You had to in it to pass it. You had to do it all in three minutes. And I'm not going to get into what all it was, but uh, all those guys from the Air Force that were George Hill, they had a terrible time. <laughs> But we were good shape when we went to school there. We had that stuff to do every day. Yeah, it's probably to your advantage. No, what? Were you ever on a ship that was sinking? One time. Ooh. But they're big, and it, and they get you all. Yeah. Uh, trying to think of the name. That wasn't the Yorktown. I forget. I don't. But you That's got right. off safely, obviously. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, there was probably 5,000 of us on that ship. Those are big ships. They're not like we can run out here on, like, at the... Uh, Lawrence. Yeah. Lawrence. No, they're big. There's every bit as long from here over that road. Yeah. Most of them weigh 30,000 tons to... The battleships were the biggest. They weighed 49,000 tons. Do you realize what, how big that is? And what? I got that little girl. How did you like the bombs? How did I what? Like the bombs. How did you detonate the explosives once they were in place? We talked a lot about that when we were kind of brainstorming. How did, want? How did you detonate the bombs once they were placed in the water underneath those, those uh, targets? How, how did they get blown up? Oh, you you a ran fuse, a, like a fuse? Yeah, but you ran wire, uh, electrical wire. Okay, so you okay. You stuck a thing in them. Uh, uh, yeah. And you had to run it back. And then there was this other guys back there took it, tied it together. You know, it's like you used one coming from one part of the ship and or the bridge, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And they tied it all together. And you had and set it for 30 minutes. A timer. Yeah. Okay. I'd give you time to get back out that out mile mm -hmm. to where they're going to pick you up. Now, you want to know how they picked this up? Yeah. I thought that'd be one thing you'd want to know. How'd they pick you up? They had, we called it Pete. Uh, I have stopped thinking so that's been a long time. This has. We had landing craft, uh, like, life rafts that had big motors, mm -hmm. big, you know, and there was two of them. They was running the one, they was pulling the other, had it on a line, maybe, I don't know how far back, that wasn't my job, 
but you stayed in the water, you made a line, all of you. Like if you're going to be on my team, you're going to be maybe uh, 50 to 100 feet in the water, straight line, right down, and they come by with that boat, it's running probably 65, 70 miles an hour, and there's a guy on that other boat, we call them boats, because if a boat's anything, it'll go on a ship. Okay, you understand that? Yeah. Okay. And uh, you just hold your arms up like that. And they come by with that. They had a, like a big, I call it a big inner tube. I don't know what it, really what it was made out of. They'd have that out in the water, and you're up in your arms, and that thing would catch you and throw you right in that boat. That's how they picked us up. This kind of that was fun. <laughs> what? Uh, how did you go in the water to not make a sound at night? How did I go in the water for what? To make to not make a sound in the night to make people Where were we was at there wasn't people. Mm. We're out in the Pacific. Islands. You've never been around the islands, have you? That's a there ain't no noise out there. There wasn't in, back then. I don't know how it is today. I wanted to go to Guam last year, and I didn't make it. I was going to take Joanne. They love, you know, you know, she knows my history. But uh, we were going to. I had reservations to go to Guam, take my lady friend, which is no longer with me, and uh, sure, what Guam looked like. Probably has changed a lot since. They call it right now. They call it the uh, Pearl of the Pacific. The Pearl of the Pacific. And that's where the Pacific Fleet is. The whole United States Pacific Fleet is based in Guam. It's not based in Pearl Harbor. There's nothing in Pearl Harbor except ships that come in to get repaired and stuff like that. There's no well, the Arizona there. It's going to be there forever. What? Did you get that? Did you get sleep? Sleep? Yeah, we slept all the time. Well. What transportation did you use the most? I, you know, you young people talk so nice and quiet. I, I, what transportation did you use the most? Like when you were going from one place to another, was it jeeps, <coughs> buses, motorcycles? No, we were on ships. Ships, okay. Ships and submarines. We went a lot on submarines. See, we go out in the submarine. Uh, people don't believe a lot of things that the SEALs do, and we've done some of them before they've done them. I've been shot out of a torpedo tube on a submarine. You understand what that is? Yeah. Well, Well, that's not very good pictures, but that's a... How were you trying to... Yeah, I was going to say, what was the reasoning for that? To get us out in the water so the ship, uh, so the submarine didn't have to surface at night, oh, so, okay. so the Japanese would see it. Oh, okay. You know, there was a war on. That's what you're forgetting. Things were different. There weren't no flashlights out there. <laughs> that's the... What? Did you get your answer to your question? Did you? Okay, well, you haven't asked me anything, and you brought me over here. I'm ashamed of you. What? How long did it take you to make the bomb? How long did it take to what? To, to like, take the explosives, you mean, and form them in your hands and, oh. and on your mission? I mean, or on... We had a bag of your pack in it. C4 pack. You know what C4 is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it just, it was like... Uh, I don't know how to explain it. They, they probably know more about it than I do. We, but we had a bag with this in it, enough to do the job, my, what my part was. You take it out, you put it together very gently, and it's ready. You stick a de detonator cap in it, and then you run your wire back to way back here, hmm. put it all together, and then... Uh, that would have been like uh, the guy was McGee. He was a Navy lieutenant. 
and away we go. So really, it didn't take very much time. You know, no. Once you got in the water. Once she's in the water and you went out there and you've done your thing, you might have been there 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Then you're on your way back. And it takes a while because you're out. You have to go back about, about a mile. You want to be far enough back. They did. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have that ship and that thing that was going to pick you up far enough back. The Japanese couldn't see it at exactly. night. Exactly. Yeah, we figured that, didn't we? That it was a nighttime. Oh yeah, everything uh, was nighttime. Maneuvers in the nighttime. What? Um, like Miss Yesterday, Miss West told us, like, does it like kind of depend on the moon? If like the light. Oh, that's one of the misconceptions people I have. It would. The moon. Amazing. And uh, and the uh, the salt in the ocean really illuminates. You'd think you said daytime. That's why we done most of our stuff where you had to stay down in the water. The only thing you had out was the head. The salt illuminates. All the salt, dollars. salt. The Pacific, the Atlantic, are very beautiful at night. If you even if you're out there, just you know, not in a boat. Because when we went on vacation last year to um, Cancun in Mexico. Well, now there you're getting into better water. Yeah, see, that's clearer yeah. water. It was really clear. Yeah. And like the at night time, all the water was like, it was kind of bright out because right. it was like, it's water. electrified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who am I going to? I'm, I've never asked. Have you asked me something? Yeah. Okay. Um, did you ever um, do your work in murky water? In what? Murky. murky. Was the water sometimes murky? Yeah. yeah. It's if the it Pacific. Was, it would be Those like places aren't murky. Um, oh, they are if you're around a, uh, where there's a ship or something and it's expelling stuff like. Yeah. yeah. We never done much of that. Um, what? I have two questions. Oh, go ahead. The first one is what are the C2 packs for? What do they feel like? The C2 hacks? What do they feel like? Well, you've had, uh, putty, I mean, uh, play putty, play, what do you call that stuff? Play 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 Not the same way, oh, it's explosive. You are very gently when you put it together. What if you do it too hard? That won't do anything because you have got a detonator in, it has to be set off with something, and something is just not going to blow up. Well, if you, I don't know. Okay, what was your other question? Yeah, you said you had two. You said. Uh, the second one was, how could you breathe underwater for that long? Good question. That's good. That's a good you question. You learn to do it. At one time, I can't do it anymore. I, uh, I could stay underwater for two, two and a half minutes. You can't stay under there for 30 seconds. Huh? I can't stay under there for 30 well, seconds. You've never, if you start right now and you go to the Y every day or someplace and you go underwater and that's a 25 yard pool, you learn to do that, swallow your breath, you got to you got to, there's so many things you've got to do to be able to do that. I can't do it anymore. I, I don't even know if I can do 50 yards in the water anymore. I used to be able to do 200. What? So you didn't have a lung of oxygen. No, we you, talked a little bit about that too, didn't we, guys? We didn't have a lung. I didn't think so. No, but we, we they weren't know. developed yet. Yes, yes. You learn, and I'm not going to ex I'm not going to do it to show you, but I can tell you if you go home tonight and get away from everybody and learn to take deep breaths. I mean, deep breaths, ten or fifteen, not that way, this way, and then hold the last ones. You've got enough oxygen in your lungs that you could probably swim if you're good at it strong enough, 100 yards in the water. That's how you learn to do it. No, we didn't have any oxygen tanks. And now the, the Navy SEALs today, they've got everything. That's why I'd like to go try some of them.
Yeah, they've got the tanks. I'd like to jump out of a plane. I'd like to do a lot of things before I die, but I'm not going to be able to do it. What? Um, like it wasn't like scary when you're trying to plant like plant the bombs. Scary? No, not really. It's 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 kind of like it takes different people. We had a lot of people that came into our units that didn't make it. They were gone. It just takes a different person. I was at the age and I was in condition at that. I'm still in pretty good condition, I think, where I wanted to do these things. I wanted to get the war over with. I wanted to kill everybody that was against us. So when you get that in your mind, you do things that you normally don't do. That's how you learn to do like any of your like friends attack on like the V Trump D-Day? Oh, do you know anybody who was involved in the D-Day? No, well, they're dead. <laughs> but on D-Day, I don't know any. Yeah. I wonder if you knew any of them personally. Oh yeah, Jim Kirkwood out here. He's been dead 15 years now. He was a good friend of mine. So he was in D-Day? Yeah. Involved on the beach. Where, yeah. Where were you? We never had a beach. We had an island. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're everywhere. Like over here is Guam, and 400, 500 miles away is another island. It's not like the beach of Normandy or something. Where were you when D-Day happened? Yeah, what were you doing on D-Day? Do you recall? On D-Day, yeah. I, I was on Guam, drinking a little beer, celebrating. We all yeah. were. Well, yeah, we were happy. Yeah. Hmm. We're glad it was over. What? Uh, what did you sleep on? What did we sleep on? Yeah. Did you have bunks? Or cots? Bags? Cots? We had, uh, on, on the base, we had cots. Mm -hmm. Just old cots. And we had sleeping bags. And when you're out on a mission, you don't have anything. You just lay down on the ground and hope you make it. It's not like going on a vacation. <laughs> what? Tavia, you got a question? Did you get any medals? Medals? Oh, I didn't bring that, but I, yeah, I've got, I don't I know. No. This is swimming medals. I don't have anything. Uh, you didn't I mean, bring your hardware, huh? No, I didn't bring it. It's hanging on my wall. Uh, I think it is hanging on his wall. Yeah, it? you saw it. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's all it's in. Well, I've got it ready for my son or my daughter because someday I'll be gone. Now, I'm going to show you a picture. This is the ceremonies at Pearl Harbor. That's what they had. And, they'll, and, and they tell you in here. You were there. This was 2013. That's the last one I went to because in 14, I was getting ready to have a knee surgery. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But. Here, let me show you, sir. This gentleman here, and I'm going to pass this around so you can see this. Because I'm going to shut up. Uh, this, this guy right here, Admiral Harry Harrison, Jr., U.S. Navy, Commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet. The whole long way. We were having lunch after after you have the ceremonies, which I'm taking you now. You're sitting in a tent with the people, and you're up in the front, and, there, and these people talk, and that's what it looks like. And then this, well, there's other things. This ship going by and that, but uh, then they have this walk of honor. And being a World War II veteran and being in Pearl and that kind of stuff, I, we got a walk of honor three times. I bet. That's yeah. it. And it's just a walk, like from out here to the front of this door, around the curve, sign it to, your, to another tent where they're serving you lunch. Now, put your hand down. It's take, going to take a while to tell you this. This is the proudest thing that ever happened to me in my life. Okay, then we need to hear this. You walk this walk of honor, every apple, 
every captain, every every officer in the Navy, every officer in the Marine Corps that's there are standing at attention and saluting you. Wow. I still can't I still can't say it without almost getting tears. It's that beautiful. Then you go down to this area where they serve you lunch. And now I'm gonna stop after this. And my lady friend and I were standing there having lunch. You don't sit down, you stand up at a high table. And we had a sandwich and a drink out of what we had. And here comes this officer with his wife. And he says, may we join you? It was him. May we join you. Whoa. <laughs> I can't get it out. That's, that's, pretty, him. that's pretty exciting. Admiral, his name is Admiral Harry B. Harris, Jr., U.S. Navy, Commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet. And I had lunch with him, my wow. wife, my lady friend. That don't happen to a guy that spent five years in the service with just a, uh, what do you call them? They call them grunt or something. We worked. We won the, we helped win the war. We probably had a lot of respect for you. What they did? You have a lot of, you had a lot yeah. of important part in the World War II. Oh, I could do a lot of things in World War II if they could ask me. Uh, but they might if I go back because, see, everybody was on the Arizona. I know of nobody now. There might be one or two that's still alive, but I doubt it. Because the last time I was there in 73, there was five of them. I actually forgotten, guys, that he was only 16 when he signed up. I was thinking you were older than 90. No, 90, no. I, yeah. I know, but I was telling them yesterday I was wrong. I was saying you were a little bit older than that. I had a friend in the service in this underwater demolition unit. He's dead. He's been dead quite a few years. Up in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. when, I was, when I was on that line in 17 and 18, Right in there. He was already 20, 21. He'd been in the service before and they made him get out because he went in at 13 years of age. His mother wanted him to come home. That's the way it is. Um, like when you were packing like the explosives together, did it ever like do anything to your hand or like ever no, you? No. It's just like I told you, it's just like buddy. Well, you clean your hands. Yeah. Just like today, you better wash your hands real good or you're going to get the flu. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. What made you want to go to war? I think that'll be our last question because we're going to have to stop. What made you want to go that day when you were sitting there having cokes at Houston Group? Well, it was after that. The fellows I ran around with, let's just say they were a couple years older than I was, and they all got drafted, or they all went to service. Oh. And I'm sitting there in Vincent's. Mm -hmm. And I'm lifeguarding at Rainbow Beach, and I'm bored to death. I ain't got a, every, everybody I ran around was gone, so I talked my mother. <laughs> talked his mother into it. Signed the papers, and I went into the service. That's it. Don't miss it one bit. Come back, went to college, got my degree, never used it. Never did, except when I was at the Y and Vincent's and Terre Haute. I left there and I went with Provincial and I retired from the Provincial Church Company. What? What color is It's just like I said, like that. What color, she said? Oh, it's a gray. Okay. It's just putty, like putty. You don't make papers. You don't have to. That's big enough. You just, that'll blow up most things in Lawrenceville. <laughs> Well, you know what? We're going to stop because I told them 1.30. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's fine. What do we say, guys? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I hope I haven't been. dumbfounded you. But I will say this to you. If you get a chance to get to over there, especially on December 7th, in your lifetime, mm -hmm. it'll still be going on. And that ship will still be there. And... Uh, I'll just leave this stuff. Are they going to be here a while? Well, they can be here a little bit longer to look at those. They can look at that stuff. I'm sorry. I just... Oh, here's something I'm proud of. And this is in China. 
Don't mean anything to you. But we had a swimming meet over there. They called it the ABC meet. American, British, and Chinese. And this is the this is our names. This is my name in Chinese. You can What's your name? Well, you can see. Oh, you would, you would you know how number four, and that's what it says. I don't Chinese. know how to do it. That's what his name is in Chinese. And that was a two meet that we had, and we won that. And, there he is. And there's, then we the come back to the United States and done other stuff. I've had a very good life, and I hope all of you live as long as I have. That would be good. Because I'll be 51 pretty soon. <laughs> and I want to make it to 100. I hope. That would be great. Thank you so much. I've known Rosemary since she was there. Yes, that's right. Yeah. We have. We've known each other a long time. Yeah, long, long time. Um, it's been a pleasure, Mr. Rivers, to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm not used to being called Mr. Rivers. Well, but we said that we would do that for respect. Now, before you leave, I want to get a picture of everybody, okay? Yeah, okay. You can look at all this stuff you want. That's what I look like today. I didn't bad, is it? If, if he's a little older, we can go out with him. <laughs> uh, she had to think. No, she would. <laughs> no, he's still swimming, guys. And this is uh, a patch you get from the USS Arizona. Tells you all about the Arizona. Well, wait, this, was this the first time that you Oh, well. And, oh, I didn't show you this. I know. It's just amazing. This is all I have. You don't get much on the Navy underwater demolitions or the Navy SEALs. They don't stop to have the picture taken. But that's that's all of them right there from World War Three or Two. And I'm in that bunch, but I my eyes are sped, I don't know where in the hell I'm at, but I'm back. I'm in there somewhere. Okay? That's the UD underwater demolitions. Oh, I was going to tell you about that. That's in Florida. You all go, your folks go to Florida? Yeah, I've been to Florida right now. Okay. Uh, see, I think I got my glasses. I forget where that's at. I think it's Fort Lauderdale. Where is it? The National Navy UDT SEAL Museum is the only museum dedicated solely to preserving the history of the U.S. Navy SEALs and their predecessors. Okay. Demolition team, Navy combat demolition units office. Where is it? Oh, Fort Pierce, Florida. That's on the East Coast. That's all I know. I don't go to the East. Huh? You gonna go into that stuff? Are you just you don't you you wanna do what I did? Well they won't do that. You'll be a Navy SEAL. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Oh my. I hope you make it. That's tough stuff. I don't even know if I could make it if I was younger. I think I could. I'd like to try. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I don't get many 